come on in. What's up? What's good? What's poppin'? What's crackin'? What's percolating? What's really good? In the hood, it is your man Theo Butler, and welcome to. It. So I, I, I guess I gotta talk about it. Episode I ain't saying. I'm just saying with the raw women. Y'all go ahead and clap that thing. Y'all yeah. go ahead. Before we begin, like, share, subscribe. If you like, leave a comment. If you don't like, leave a constructive comment. If you think I'm being too hard, I get it. Not saying I necessarily care, but I get it. So, uh, I was asked, how did I feel about the comments that Letitia Wright made? She was just recently on the ringer and she was asked a question uh, by Van Latham. The question was in regards to uh, Black Panther 2, recast the child. Her comment, uh, he answered the question, um, what do you say to people that didn't want to see the character die, that didn't want to see the, that wanted to see the character either recast or move to save themselves that pain to keep the story of the child going forward? She said, that's a very good question. That's hard, Ann. I don't like misquoting people. I don't. I'll be right back. It was so jarring and hurtful to wake up that morning mm -hmm. and see that we had lost Chad with Bozeman. Mm -hmm. And part of me is afraid to go to the film and have to go through that again. Like it's actually giving me chills right now. What do you say to people who didn't want to see the character die, that wanted to see the character either recast or moved on to save themselves that pain or to keep the story of T'Challa going forward? What do you say to people? Man, that's that's a very good question. It's 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 hard because you know I understand. You know, as yeah. an artist, you have to be empathetic to what everybody's experience is. You know, with a story, and I understand how invested so many people are. It's it's hard for for the outside world to understand what's happening for us as a team because yeah. we are also grieving. So we yeah. are as a team trying to bring you something that honors him because what we can't do is put it under the carpet we can't we can't just we can't just forget Chadwick Boseman we 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 cannot you know and and we as a team are trying our best to bring you something that is honorable um something that um helps you to to join us and the Wakandan family on this journey of of respecting his life, you know, because he he did those films with all that he had going oh, on, man, and even... and there's honor in that. There there, yeah. there there is respect in that, and and one reason why we 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 chose to continue doing the film is because like like Ryan felt very strongly that 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 Chad was just like bro, like you have to carry on, like you have to you have to put this thing together and and go out there and and do it. Um, so. I, I, I would say to you to not to not be scared. Um, uh -huh. We are a, we are very sensitive about how our audience members feel. Um, we are with you guys. We are in pain with you guys. But at the same time, we we want to bring you guys something that's honorable to our brother, something that's entertaining, and something that could leave a legacy to add on to his legacy. And 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 I hope you enjoy it. So shout out to Ringer. Uh, y'all make sure y'all go check them out and everything like that. Uh, so that's that's what she had to say it was a few days ago right right a few days ago okay um i don't like moving the goalposts i i don't i didn't told y'all i don't i don't believe that moving the goalposts so before i feel compelled to address what she said just a few days ago on the ring of earth Y'all should see some pictures. Pulling up on the screen here. Uh, yeah. Y'all see some pictures. I would want to know about what was going on between uh, Ryan Cooler and Nate Moore on May 16th, 2020 from We Got This Covered. Because there was a conversation had then to moving the mantle away from T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman was still alive. And I know some people like, that's not a credible site. That's cool. I'm going to tell you who is credible. Comic book is credible. May 18th, future Black Panther movies could pass the mantle. 
once again, and they are quoting exact. They're talking about exactly what took place in the, from we got this covered. Yeah, they're having a conversation. Chadwick Bozeman is still alive. Nobody knows Chadwick Bozeman is ill except his family. Right. Okay. Before I get into what the Tisha Wright said a few days ago, I got to go to uh, November 18th, 2019, when Chadwick Bozeman was offered roles in Disney Plus. You know, I would be I would not be surprised if it was the same projects we're talking right now with Disney Plus. Ryan Coogler associated with condoms. Okoye. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. See how all this comes circle? This was November 18th, 2019. From CBR.com. Yeah, ain't nobody questioning their sources. Or I could go to Comic Book News. Diversity destroying Black Panther. Chadwick Bozeman unhappy from January 23rd, 2020. That was then. Y'all see these pictures up here? Because I'm making sure they stay right here. You see them? Okay, cool. But you want me to talk about what Letitia Wright said. Okay, before I talk about what Letitia Wright said, I'm going to go to basically... I'm going to put it in his proper timeline. Nate Moore having this conversation with Ringiverse. Yes, I realize he had this conversation with Ringiverse late last year, but the conversation that he had with Ringiverse late last year reveals a conversation that he had with Ryan Coogler minutes after Chadwick Boseman passed. As soon as they heard the news, said it took a matter of minutes. A matter of minutes. When did Chadwick Boseman die? August 28th, 2020? So what we saying, by August 30th, they knew what they were doing? Think about it. Because that's contradictory to what Letitia Wright is saying. She's saying a lot of thought went into this. But Nate Moore just said, oh, uh, where are my marriage? Hold on. What are the chances we see the character of T'Challa in the MCU moving forward? And what is it like having to balance uh, loyalty to a fan base and to a performer as regal and elegant as Chadwick Boseman, yeah. along with the future of that franchise, that character, and of Wakanda? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. I will say the chances that you see T'Challa in our... I'm not, I'm not hedging my bets, I'm being quite honest. Uh huh. T'Challa is you will not see T'Challa in the MCU six one six universe. We we couldn't do it. I mean, I will say mm -hmm. when when Chad passed, it was a real conversation we had with Kugler about what do we do, and it was a fast conversation. It wasn't weeks. It was minutes of we have to figure out how to move this franchise on without that character because I think we all feel so much of T'Challa in the. MCU on the screen, not in comics, right, um, is tied to Chadwick's performance, is, is what he brought to that role, both on and off screen, I would argue. So as hard as it is narratively to figure out what to do, because it's, it's a big hole, um, uh, at no point did we consider recasting him. Mm. So, so, the, so the challenge for Black Panther Wakanda Forever is telling a story without T'Challa. And I think it's a challenge we're up for, and obviously we're in the middle of it and, and we're figuring it out. And it's, it's so far, I think what we're getting is, is great. But the challenge of the movie, I think is to entertain people, but there will be a level of, I think catharsis and people coming back to this universe without that guy, because that guy and that universe to me are one and the same. So as filmmakers and storytellers, you have to figure out how people are going to feel going into your movie and what you want that movie to say about that guy who's not going to be in your movie. Mm. Wow. Okay, so that's Nate Moore. Ironically enough, he being interviewed by who? Ringer. Thank y'all, Ringer, because y'all got these people over here dry snitching on themselves. A matter of minutes. That don't sound like what Letitia's saying. Oh, but if you don't want to go along with that because there's a mountain of evidence floating on this thing right now, let's go ahead and go to what Derek Bozeman had to say on December 8th, 2020. Hold on. What would he want Black Panther 2 to be like? Mm. I can't answer that. What would you want it to be like? I can't come here and ask a Black Panther <laughs> question. 
<laughs> no, I'm joking there. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I would want him to be in it. I would want him to continue Obviously, to be yeah. King T'Challa. Now, I can answer what you aren't asking me. Okay, what's that question? Uh, I see a narrative uh, being assembled by Hollywood. Hmm. And I could be completely wrong, but a black man being a king does not fit the narrative of not at all what they want the world yeah to see um a black man being a victim yeah yeah black man being killed in the streets yeah. yeah but a black man being a king is not the narrative that they want the world to see and i don't think they liked the response That's that powerful. came back from a black man being a king and though i believe that black women are queens anyway yeah i think that the narrative that we will see is that the black panther will be a female next. you think so i believe so i believe it'll be her little sister or his little sister the one the that's what i think but hmm. a black man being a king is does not fit what the powers that be want hmm that's very interesting. You know, it's said that the more we do talk things out, the more we do start to heal, yes, but also the more we start to honor the person too, which is even deeper, I think. Yeah, I mean, I have other battles to to fight that are that are surrounding this. Yeah. So that narrative that I gave um sounds kind of con probably kind of conspiratorial. You think? I think so. Why is that? I got asked that. Why is that? The journalist in me has got to ask that question. Say it again? The, the journalist in me has to ask that question. Why is that? I don't think anything ha happens by happenstance. Huh. I'm going to leave it right there for now. I got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Like strong grip there, man. I almost came out of my chair. Uh <laughs> okay. I'm back. Don't like that one? Let's see what Kevin Feige got to say on December 10th, 2020. Acknowledge the devastating loss of a dear friend and member of the Marvel Studios family. Chadwick Boseman was an immensely talented actor and an inspirational individual who affected all of our lives professionally and personally. His portrayal of T'Challa the Black Panther is iconic and transcends any iteration of the character in any other medium from Marvel's past. And it's for that reason that we will not recast the character. However, to honor the legacy that Chad helped us build through his portrayal of the King of Wakanda, we want to continue to explore the world of Wakanda and all of the rich and varied characters introduced in the first film. Writer-director Ryan Coogler is hard at work on the sequel now and will bring the film to you in theaters July 8th, 2022. Wow, that's, that's a lot. You want me to put when Derek Bozeman made his statement to TMZ? I can certainly put that in here as well. You want me to put when Chadwick Bozeman's niece made her statement? I can put that in here as well. Okay, well, I know quite a few of y'all were capping for the cast and crew about how close they were to Chadwick Bozeman. Hold on, let's do this too. He would thank God. He would thank his parents. He would thank his ancestors for their guidance and their sacrifices. He would thank his incredible team, Michael Green, Azim Chiba, Nikki Firavante, Evelyn O'Neill, Chris Huvane, Logan Coles. He would thank his team on set for this film. Deirdre Dixon, Sean Richards, Craig Anthony, and Andrew Carlone. He would say something beautiful, something inspiring, something that would amplify that little voice inside of all of us that tells you you can, that tells you to keep going, that calls you back to what you are meant to be doing at this moment in history. He would thank Mr. George C. Wolfe, Mr. Denzel Washington, 
Lots of people in Netflix. You would think Miss Viola Davis, Mr. Glenn Turman, Mr. Michael Potts, Mr. Coleman Domingo, Miss Taylor Page, Mr. Dusan Brown. And I don't have his words. But we have to take all the moment to celebrate those we love. So thank you, HFPA, for this opportunity to do exactly that. And hun, you keep them coming. Thank you. Okay. That's Mrs. Bozeman. Mrs. Simone Ledwood Bozeman. You heard her drop some names. I know I heard her drop some names. Did you hear anybody? I heard her drop some names. But let's keep it going because that's her receiving the golden glows for her late husband. Let's keep it going because we got Derek over here. Derek Bozeman. Pastor Derek Bozeman. You should be familiar with him. I just showed him in the previous video where he was talking to Urban Faith, right? Okay, let's play his clips from D23. Hold on. This, this honor that's being bestowed upon him, first of all, I wish that he was here to receive it. Him not being here has been a point of, of immense pain for my whole family. But as I think about him, I think about how he how he honored our parents, how he honored his family, how he honored even his, his friends, and he made sure that his friends also had good careers to me. And to me, you and daddy are also legends because it takes a king and a queen to create a king. Okay, there you got it. Did you hear what he said? I especially found it telling when he said his brother's passing has been a point of great pain. point. Great pain. What was the question that was asked by Van Latham? Do you have anything for the people, to say to the people, that didn't want to see the character die, that wanted to see the character either recast or moved on to save themselves that pain or to keep the story of T'Challa going forward? That's comma. That's a very good question. That's hard. Why is it hard? Letitia. Miss Wright. Why is it hard? Did you hear the family? Do you even care about the family? Why is it hard? You want to know how I feel about what Letitia Wright said? Letitia Wright is an actress. We all go to movies and we all go to TV shows and we'll all watch TV shows where people either make us laugh, make us angry, or make us cry based on their ability to act. Now, we have a movie that's coming out December the 11th. A movie that if you just step back and looked at it, just push back from the table, you would ask yourself some questions. Of course, you would need to be knowledgeable to ask yourself some questions, but at the very least, you would ask yourself some questions. We know that this movie represents black women well. It does. I don't think anybody from Recast to Charlotte has complained about that one bit. I know for a fact those of us that want to boycott this movie, that are going to boycott this movie, we're not boycotting the movie because of the emphasis 
on the women. We're boycotting this movie because of the de-emphasis on the black men. As Derek alluded to at D23, to him, his mother and father are both queen and king because it takes a king and a queen to make a king or a queen. This movie would have you believe that black men don't matter. And while either your feminism or the hurt that men, specifically black men, have caused you in your past, give you the impression that you don't have to care. When we talk about black male representation, positive black representation, our sons matter just as much as our daughters. We all matter. We got it in the first movie that we all matter. In this movie, we're deliberately getting something different. And it's all a lie. It's been about business since day one. They talk about mourning. They wanted to go back to shooting, filming this movie. June 2021. If they were mourning like they say they were mourning, they should have did what we do at regular jobs. Stay out on bereavement leave. Nobody asked for this movie to be filmed. But if you're asking me how I feel about what Letitia Wright said, <laughs> well, I felt the same, I feel the same way today about what Letitia Wright said. The same way I felt on December 8th before I ever knew she would say something like this. I don't care. I don't care what anybody says who stands by and willfully participates in the separation, the division of black people. I don't care who they are and I don't care what they stand for. Male, female, black, white, Jew, Gentile, heterosexual, gay, lesbian. I don't care. And neither should you. That's how I feel about it. Boycott Black Panther too. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Peace.